Good morning everyone. Myself Srivani, working as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering Department in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigal, Hyderabad. So in the today's lecture, we are going to learn one of the topic in static magnetic fields is magnetic boundary conditions. So magnetic before going to discuss about magnetic boundary conditions, we will come to know how many types of magnetic materials are there, how the classification is done based upon which parameter the classification is considered in magnetic phase. So the magnetic susceptibility as we have discussed as uh, that is psi e electric susceptibility, the similar term which we have considered in the magnetic fields is magnetic susceptibility psi m. m is the notation for magnetic fields or the relative permeability mu r. This is analogous to in the electric fields as relative permittivity as epsilon r. To classify materials in terms of their magnetic property or behavior, we have the two fundamental terms considered as magnetic susceptibility and the relative permeability mu r then a material is said to be non-magnetic means when the material is said to be non-magnetic if magnetic susceptibility xm equal to 0 or relative permeability mu r equal to 1 then it is magnetic otherwise then free space or air and materials with xm equal to means magnetic susceptibility equal to 0 or mu r is approximately equal to 1 or regarded as non-magnetic. So depending upon this relative permeability and uh, magnetic susceptibility materials, magnetic materials are broadly classified into three cases as diamagnetics, paramagnetics and ferromagnetic materials. So generally magnetic materials are of two types linear and nonlinear magnetic materials. Under linear, we have two classifications, diamagnetic materials, paramagnetic materials, and under nonlinear, we have ferromagnetic materials. Next is, actual topic is, in this lecture, we are going to learn is magnetic boundary conditions. As we have discussed in the electric fields, that is between two dielectric media as homogeneous media or between isotropic and homogeneous media, we have considered three cases in the electric fields we have discussed. In that, we have used two Maxwell's equations to derive the boundary conditions between two media. In electric fields, two Maxwell's equations are, one is derived from the Gauss law, that is closed surface integral S d dot ds is equal to q enclosed and one more Maxwell's equation in the electrostatic fields by the conservative nature of electrostatic fields that is integral l e dot dl is equal to zero. So we will use their these two Maxwell's equations to get the boundary conditions between any two media. The similar here also, now to derive the boundary conditions in magnetic fields, we are going to use two Maxwell's equations for static magnetic fields. That is, one is from the Ampere circuit law, that is, closed line integral L h dot dl is equal to i n closed, and one more Maxwell's equation that is from the, the remark which we have considered in the magnetic fields as magnetic monopole does not exist. Then from that, closed surface integral s b dot ds is equal to 0. So to derive the boundary conditions in magnetic fields, we need to use two Maxwell's equations in the static magnetic fields or magnetostatic fields or one is closed surface integral b dot ds is equal to 0 and another one is from Ampere circuit law. Simply we call it as Ampere's law that is given by closed line integral l h dot dl is equal to i enclosed. Right? So, 
we define magnetic boundary conditions as that the conditions that here h or b h is to be considered as magnetic field intensity and b is magnetic flux density so h field or b field must satisfy at the boundary between two different media so in order to derive the boundary conditions related to magnetic fields we need to use two maxwell's equations which we have learned in the case of magnetostatic fields from ampere's law and from the magnetic monopole not existence case so along with these two maxwell's equations we also considered as the figure so from the figure a means you are going to apply the first maxwell's equation as closed surface integral s b dot ds is equal to 0 then if you apply this is the equation to this gaussian cylindrical surface then we are going to get one of the boundary condition in magnetic fields and one more Maxwell's equation which we have considered from the Ampere circuit law that is closed line integral L E dot sorry H dot T L is equal to I n closed to the rectangular closed path which is representing the path will be from A to B, B to C, C to D and D to A. If we observe the directions from A to B, this is uh, in this particular direction, then C to D direction will be opposite to that of A to B direction. And similarly, if you observe B to C direction, then C to D to A direction, these two are in opposite directions. Now, closed conducting path, hence, closed line integral L H dot DL, we are going to apply for this rectangular closed path to get one of the maximum boundary condition in magnetostatic fields. So, here is the boundary. First, if you consider first figure, that's one, figure A, then there is a boundary which is separating between two media as above this boundary we have medium 1 and below that we have medium 2 and the characteristics parameters of this magnetic fields are categorized based upon the mu1 and mu2 permeability of the medium 1 as mu1 and permeability of the medium 2 as mu2 and uh, along with this two maxwell's equations we need to consider the decomposition between the two media as for the H is decomposed into H1 plus H2 and magnetic field flux density B is also decomposed into two field components as B1 and B2. And H1 is decomposed into again its two orthogonal components as H1T plus H1N and similar decomposition then can be done for the field 2 as H2 is given by H2T plus H2N. So, this is for magnetic field intensity. Then, the decomposition for the magnetic flux density means B1 is decomposed into B1T plus B1N and B2 is B2T plus B2N. So, the similar analysis we have considered in the electric fields as the total electric field E is decomposed into two or two components as E1 and E2 and magnetic electric flux density D is also decomposed into D1 and D2. So, as E is analogous to H and D is analogous to B in magnetic fields, now here E1 and E2 are also decomposed into two orthogonal components as tangential and normal components. So, here if you observe in the magnetic fields, so, there is a boundary which is separating between two magnetic media. In the medium 1, the characteristic parameter is given by mu1 and in the medium 2, the parameter is given by mu2. Where mu1 is given by here, mu1 is nothing but mu0 into mu r1 and mu2 is given by mu0 into mu r2. So, mu0 is permeability of the free space medium and mu r is given by the relative permeability of the medium 1 and medium 2 respectively. Right. So, mu1 and mu2 are given by here, mu0, mu r1 and mu0 into mu r2. And we know that the value of mu0 permeability of the free space medium is given by 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 Henry per meter. So, and the magnetic flux density B1 is decomposed into two orthogonal components as B1T 
and B1 in and here B2 is decomposed into two orthogonal components as B2T and B2N and the field 1 making angle is considered to be theta 1 in the medium 1 and in the medium 2 it is theta 2 and we are going to apply the Maxwell's equation that is to be closed surface integral S B dot ds is equal to 0 to the this rectangular I'm sorry cylindrical Gaussian surface. So this cylindrical Gaussian uh, surface is uh, cylindrical amperian surface is placed in the interface or on the boundary means above this boundary we have the surface area is given by delta s and below that we have delta s and the total height of this uh, uh, cylindrical amperian uh, path is uh, divided into total del h and this delta h is divided into above that boundary del h by 2 and below that it will be del h by 2. So total becomes delta h. So now to derive the first boundary condition we need to use the first Maxwell's equation in the magnetic fields as closed surface integral s b dot ds is equal to 0 then we are going to get here as b1 and delta s minus b2n delta s is equal to 0. So the boundary Maxwell's equation is closed surface integral s b dot ds is equal to 0 where this b is decomposed into what are the two components b1 and b2. Hence for the normal components means why because that uh, amperian surface is placed vertically. So vertical components are denoted with normal components hence these two are denoted with b1n and b2n and the total height is decomposed into means above that boundary we have medium 1 and below that boundary we have medium 2 hence we have considered the difference as given by for the first means b1n into delta s minus b2n into delta s is equal to 0. So b1n delta s minus b2n delta s is equal to 0 from this analysis. Now b1n delta s means b1n delta s is equal to b2n into delta s. So both sides delta s gets cancelled hence b1n equal to b2n. So this is the equation as we have got b1n equal to b2n. So from that statement we can say that normal components of b means magnetic flux density is continuous at the boundary or interface. Now from this as we know that the relation between B and H, magnetic flux density B and magnetic field intensity H the relation is given by B equal to mu into H. Right? So B1 is given by mu1 into H1 and B2 is given by mu2 into H2. So it is related to normal component or tangential component depending upon the boundary condition which we have got. So here normal components are there hence we just substitute in place of h1 and h2 by h1n and h2n. Hence b1n means mu1 h1n is equal to mu2 h2n or mu0 mu r1 h1n is equal to mu0 mu r2 h2n. Mu0 mu0 gets cancelled mu r1 h1n is equal to mu r2 h2n. So here normal components of magnetic field intensity h1n and h2n are multiplied with the extra factors called relative permeabilities of the respective mediums as mu r1 and mu r2. Hence from the statement we can say that the normal components of both the fields medium 1 and medium 2 magnetic field intensities are discontinuous across the boundary right so from the statement b1 n equal to b2n we can say that uh, we can conclude that normal component of b is continuous across the boundary and it is also shows that the normal components of magnetic field intensity h is discontinuous across the boundary so to derive this uh, boundary condition we have used the one of the maxwell's equation for the magnetic fields as closed surface integral is b dot ds is equal to 0. 
right so from that we have considered the total magnetic flux density b is decomposed into two orthogonal components as b1 and b2 related to the normal as well as tangential components that b is decomposed into b1 is decomposed into b1 n plus b1 t and b2 is decomposed into b2 n plus b2 t so based upon that we have got the relation b1 n delta s minus b2 n delta s is equal to 0 and from that we both sides delta s terms gets cancelled b1 n is equal to b2 n or mu1 h1 n equal to mu2 h2 n then so in order to get another boundary condition in the magnetic fields we are going to use one more maxwell's equation that is from the ampere's law so which is given by integral l h dot dl is equal to i enclosed so now apply that equation number two means this is the equation closed line integral l h dot dl is equal to i enclosed to the closed path a b c d a of figure means here is the figure so now you know to apply this is the maxwell's equation we need to consider one complete rectangular closed path so here rectangular closed path defines from a to b b to c c to d and d to a now from a to b what is the magnetic field intensity or what is the component which we are going to consider and uh, so the rectangular closed path means we need to consider along with the horizontal width we are going to consider along with the vertical this also length also why because rectangular closed path means this path can be defined as here closed line integral h dot dl can be extended like this closed line integral closed circulation this path defines from a to b h dot dl from b to c h dot dl from d i'm sorry c to d h dot dl plus d to a h dot dl individually we are going to estimate from a to b what is the value of h and dl and from b to c what is the value of h and dl from d to c to d what is the value of h and dl along with from d to a what is the value of h and dl finally we are going to add all the four integral components to get closed line integral l h dot dl so now to obtain one more boundary condition in the magnetic fields we are going to consider one of the maxwell's equation as from the ampere's circuit law and that too we are going to apply it for the rectangular closed path so if you close that if you close that line then it becomes surface so surface means we are going to consider its current density as k into ds we know that the three current distributions in the continuous current distributions in the magnetic fields are IDL equal to KDS is equal to JD. So related to surface means we are going to consider the component as K into DS. Right? So here if you observe horizontal width means that is delta W and vertical width is given by here delta H. Now, if you observe from C to D, it will be del W. Then, if you observe from A to B, it will be this is plus del W, and here it will be minus del W. Similarly, this delta H is again divided into two components as del H by 2 and del H by 2. Similarly, on this side, opposite direction, minus del H by 2 and minus del H by 2. So, again, the interface which is separating between two media as 1 and 2 hence h component is decomposed into h1t and h1n similarly this h2 component is decomposed into h2n and h22t where an2 is the unit vector normal to the particular surface right so to use uh, now to get the another boundary condition in the magnetic fields we are going to use one more maxwell's equation that is from the amperes circuit law so and uh, that ampere circuit law is applied to the a b c d a that is closed conducting path of figure b where surface current k is on the boundary and is assumed to the normal to the path then we are going to obtain means i enclosed we will consider is here k into 
ds then ds is given by horizontal width density is del w which is equal to so this total equation means closed line integral l h dot dl can be extended means from a to b h dot dl from b to c h dot dl from c to d h dot dl from d to a h dot dl which is equal to from a to b means if you observe there in the rectangular closed conducting path so from a to b c and d so this width is given by del w and this is the height which we have answered here del h and if you observe this one minus del w this side it will be minus delta h why because if we observe from a to b and c to t the two directions are in opposite and similarly from b to c and d to a the directions are to be opposite to that this two right so depending upon that we are going to consider is here from a to b what is the value of h component means h1t horizontal component that is tangential component h1t into dl horizontally width will be delta w so similar to that a to b what is that other direction component here c to d means from here this c to d it will be given by h2t into minus delta w okay then plus from b to c means vertically we have considered normal components as h11 h1n into del h by 2 and in the next case it will be minus h1n del h by 2 and from d to a it will be given by h2n del h by 2 minus h2n del h by 2 so as del h terms gets cancel and we are uh, we are going to have here h1t minus h2t into delta w is left out right so if you substitute in place of that one k dot del w means i enclosed is nothing but the current density which is flowing on the uh, which is considered to be on the interface as current density as k and uh, ds is given by delta w so now to simplify that equation means both sides we are going to have the h1t into del w minus h2t into del w which is equal to k into delta w this is given by total i enclosed throughout that rectangular closed path so if you close that line in, uh, close that line then it becomes surface hence we have considered k as surface current density then ds term is given by delta w so in both sides if you take delta w as common means h1t minus h2t into del w is equal to k into del w so this this gets cancel h1t minus h2t equal to k so this is the equation which we have got another boundary condition in magnetostatic fields right so h1t minus h2t equal to k so from this statement we can conclude that this shows that the tangential component of h is discontinuous suppose if it is um, k equal to 0 means there exist uh, free of current distribution means current density k becomes 0 hence h1t equal to h2t so from this two we can say that tangential components of magnetic field intensities are continuous across the boundary but in the presence of this current density that statement is given by tangential components of magnetic field intensities h1 and h2 are discontinuous across the boundary right so from this h we are going to have another relation as b and mu why because the b and h are given by relation b equal to mu into h and then b1 is given by mu1 into h1 similarly b2 is given by mu2 into h2 and in place of that b1 and b2 decomposition if we consider b1 is given by b1t plus b1n and b2 is given by b2t plus b2n 
So these are the two orthogonal components. Means the angle between two are given by exactly ninety degrees, right? So hence, based upon that, b equal to mu into h. Here we have the relation for h. Then h is to be expressed in terms of b. Means from that relation, this relation h is given by b by mu. Hence H one T is substituted in place of H one T B one T by mu one minus in place of H two T B two T by mu two, which is equal to K. So consider this as another example equation. So in this case also, now B one T by mu one minus B two T by mu two, which is equal to K. From this statement also, we can say that tangential components of magnetic flux densities are discontinuous across the boundary right so in general we can express that equation number 6 means generally magnetic field intensity is a vector in order to express that in the form of vector we just consider here h1 minus h2 into an12 which is equal to k means where an12 is a unit vector normal to the interface and is directed from the medium 1 2 Right. So this we have observed from the figure. It has this one. This is the A N one two. Right. So next. So now to simplify those two boundary conditions, we are going to use here the boundary is the free of current or media or not conductors. Means if k equal to zero, means k is free current density. So throughout that rectangular closed path, so this is uh, separated by medium one and q, and the rectangular closed conducting path will be represented as in the directions as like this closed conducting. So this is the case if you are assuming then the current density is free. Means if k equal to zero, then that equation means previously we have got a relation h one t minus h two t equal to k. If k equal to zero, then h one t minus h two t equal to zero. Then from that h one t equal to h two t. So h one t equal to h two t. From these two, we can say that tangential components of both magnetic field intensities are continuous across the boundary. If k is free of current, means if k equal to zero case, h one t equal to h two t. Then similarly, we are going to have another equation as b one t by mu one minus b two t by mu two equal to k. Again, here also if we substitute k by zero, then b one t by mu one minus b two t by mu two equal to zero. Then from this, b one t by mu one is equal to b two t by mu two. So here, now to uh, conclude the statement, here extra terms are added. That is mu one and mu two. The two characteristic parameters of the magnetic media one and two are given by mu one and mu two. So from this statement, we can say that b one t by mu one equal to b two t by mu two. Then this statement is given by Tangential components of both magnetic flux densities are discontinuous across the boundary. So, this is the one of the boundary condition for the magnetic fields, and it is thus from those two statements we can say that tangential component of H is continuous while that of magnetic flux densities V is discontinuous across the boundary. Right. So, if the fields make an angle theta. The fields making an angle theta with the normal to the interface means along with the two boundary conditions h1 t equal to h2 t or b1 t by mu1 which is equal to b2 t by mu2 and uh, one more boundary condition we have got as b1 n is equal to b2 n or mu1 h1 n is equal to mu2 h2 n. H to n. So this is the one of the boundary condition in the magnetic bond media. And uh, H one t equal to H two t if k equal to zero is another magnetic boundary conditions. So from this st statement we can say that normal component of magnetic flux densities are continuous. And from this statement we can say that tangential components of magnetic field intensities are 
continuous right so depending upon these two relations we are going to have another relation as magnetic flux densities which are bending at the interfaces or boundary called from that we are going to have refraction of the magnetic fields so to derive that we are going to have here if the fields making an angles theta means if the medium one to be theta one and the, if it is medium two that is angle to be given by theta two and those two are normal to the interfaces hence those two equations means the previous equation we have got v1 n is equal to v2 n so from these two we are going to have here v1 cos theta 1 is equal to v2 cos theta 2 right so generally from the triangle we are going to have here this is the angle theta 2 if we consider so this is v2 t and uh, this is v2 n so if we observe here cos theta 2 from this triangle cos theta 2 we are going to consider cos theta 2 equal to adjacent side is given by here d2 n by hypotenuses b2 total is b2 hence it is from this b2 n is equal to b2 cos theta 2 so similarly from medium 1 we are going to have b1 n is equal to b1 cos theta 1 so from these two boundary conditions b1 is equal to b2 n we can say that b1 cos theta 1 equal to b2 cos theta 2 so from those two relations so previously we have got b1 n is equal to b2 n case then b1 cos theta 1 which is equal to b2 cos theta 2 next one more relation from the tangential components of the magnetic field intensities those two are h1t and h2t case then if you substitute in place of h by v1 mu then h1t equal to h2t then v1 by mu1 into sin theta1 which is equal to v2 by mu2 into sin theta2 so the similar tangential components if you find so sin theta1 if you consider from this relation sin theta1 from that figure in the medium one so sin theta1 is equal to the h1 opposite uh, side is here given by h1t then hypotenuse is h1 then from this h1t can be written as h1 into sin theta1 right if we substitute in place of this h1 by v and mu then v1 by mu1 into sin theta1 is the value of h1t similarly if you observe h1t in place of h12 by h2t which is equal to v2 by mu2 into sin theta2 right so according to the another boundary condition that is h1t equal to h2t the relation is given by v1 by mu1 into sin theta1 equal to v2 by mu2 into sin theta2 right so if we observe here h1t equal to h2t then these two must be same v1 by mu1 from these two relations means from these two relations v1 n equal to v2n means we are going to have v1 cos theta1 is equal to v2 cos theta2 now from these two relations h1t equal to h2t then v1 by mu1 cos theta1 sorry sin theta1 which is equal to b2 by mu2 into sin theta2 right so now if you consider the ratio between these two to get the magnetic flux lines we are going to consider here as b1 by mu1 sin theta1 by b1 cos theta1 which is equal to b2 by mu2 into sin theta2 by b2 cos theta 2 right so this b2 and this b2 b1 b1 gets cancelled sin theta 1 by cos theta 1 represents tan theta 1 by mu 1 is equal to sin theta by theta 2 by cos theta 2 becomes tan theta 2 by mu 2 or from this tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 is equal to mu 1 by mu 2 
and we know that the relation the equation for mu is given by mu naught into mu r this is the product of or multiplication factor for the relative permeability and free space permeability which is given by this permeability of the respective material so if you substitute mu1 by mu naught into mu r1 by mu naught into mu r2 then these two gets cancelled from that we can say that tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 equal to mu r1 by mu r2 or in general we can say that tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 equal to mu 1 by mu 2. So this is the equation which is called as law of refraction for the magnetic flux lens at a boundary with no surface current. Why? Because if we consider along with the surface currents, then boundary condition becomes H1T minus H2T equal to K. But it is not exactly equal to, if we consider in the presence of this K current density, then H1T minus H2T equal to K. This is the case. This is the equation to be obtained is not possible. If you are assuming the free of current density case means surface current density K equal to 0 only, then the boundary condition becomes H1T equal to H2T. Then with this only, then the law of refraction of magnetic flux lines at a boundary are derived that is tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 equal to mu 1 by mu 2. Right? So, in this lecture, what we have learned is, firstly we have learned what do you mean, by, um, what are the different classifications related to magnetic materials. So, depending upon the magnetic susceptibility and uh, relative permeability, we have three classifications. One is diamagnetic materials, paramagnetic materials and ferromagnetic materials. Then after that materials, we have learned one of the important topic in static magnetic fields or magnetostatic fields is magnetic boundary conditions. So, to derive this magnetic boundary conditions, we have used two Maxwell's equations. One is closed surface integral S V dot ds is equal to 0. From this, we can say that magnetic monopole does not exist in any post conducting paths. Hence, closed surface integral S V dot ds is equal to 0 is the one of the Maxwell's equation. And the second Maxwell's equation which we have used is here from the Ampere circuit law that is closed line integral L h dot dl is equal to i enclosed. Right? So, to apply this uh, closed surface integral S b dot ds is equal to 0, there we have used a uh, rectangle, oh, sorry, cylindrical ampere end path. Then there exist above that uh, boundary we have medium 1 and below that medium we have medium 2. Then depending upon that the surfaces are obtained as delta s and minus delta s. Depending upon that, the components which we have uh, considered as the first boundary condition is obtained as B1n is equal to B2n. Then based upon this, we are going to have the relation for H is mu1 H1n is equal to mu2 H2n. Right? So, and uh, we are going to use one more Maxwell's equation to derive another boundary condition as closed line integral L h dot dl is equal to i enclosed. Now from this we are going to have h1t minus h2t equal to k or b1t minus by b mu1 minus b2t by mu2 equal to k. So in the presence of uh, surface current density these are the two Maxwell's equations then with the absence of this k means if the region is to be assumed as free of current density and k equal to 0 case then h1t equal to h2t and b1t by mu1 is equal to b2t by mu2 right so from these two b1n is equal to b2n case we can say that normal components of magnetic flux densities are continuous across the boundary and from this statement normal components of magnetic field intensities are discontinuous across the boundary. Now, in the presence of surface current densities, H1T minus H2T equal to K is said to be tangential components of magnetic field intensities or discontinuous across the boundary. In the absence of this K, H1T equal to H2T. Then the boundary condition is said to be here 
tangential components of both magnetic field intensities H1 and H2 are continuous across the boundary. Similarly, P1 T by mu1 is equal to B2 T by mu2 case. This is said to be tangential components of magnetic flux densities 1 and 2 are discontinuous across the boundary. So, in order to derive the law of refraction for the magnetic flux lines, we are going to assume the boundary is free of current density. Hence, if we are assuming k equal to 0 case, then we are going to have the relation tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 equal to mu 1 by mu 2. So, this is the equation which is called as law of refraction for the magnetic flux lines at a boundary with no surface current. The similar uh, equation which we have got in the electric fields is tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 equal to epsilon 1 by epsilon 2. So, this is the equation called law of refraction for the electric flux lines at a boundary. Right? So, in this lecture, we have learned two important topics. One is different types of our classification related to magnetic materials and important, most important one related to the magnetic fields as magnetic boundary conditions. So, in that uh, we have used two Maxwell's equations in the magnetostatic fields and uh, two boundary conditions we have obtained V1n is equal to V2n and H1t equal to H2t if k equal to 0. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.